notices of motion. Councilor McCaddy, do you wish to introduce your notice of motion? I do, Mr. Mayor, and I'd like to, uh, this is concerning the reaffirmation of Council's position regarding the B-Line LRT on King Street, and I'd like to begin by uh, moving uh, that uh, the rail rules of order be waived in order to allow for the introduction of the motion, and I'd be moved by myself, second by Councilor Ferguson. All in favor? On the motion. On the motion itself, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to, uh, to read it. Go ahead. It's uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Ferguson. And as I said, it's, uh, it's concerning the reaffirmation of Council's position respecting the B-Line LRT on King Street. So it reads as follows. Whereas, City of Hamilton staff and City Council have been working on a detailed plan for a B-Line LRT for several years in partnership with Metrolinx in the province of Ontario. And whereas, while there's a variety of important transit needs in Hamilton, including extending GO train service to the East Hamilton, implementing a fully functioning A-Line transit service, City Council had previously provided direction to City staff to prioritize a design for a B-Line LRT project. And whereas, on February 27th, 2013, City Council voted unanimously to request 100% funding from the province of Ontario for a B-Line LRT on King Street, and I've referenced the uh, GIC report uh, that uh, that item was uh, covered in. And whereas the Chamber of Commerce's Light Rail Transit Task Force, with members including Councillors Fire Ferguson, myself, and uh, Mayor Bertina, has been working diligently to promote a B-Line LRT on King Street in support of Council's position and in conjunction with many other individuals and organizations in Hamilton. And whereas it is critical that Hamilton communicate clearly with the province of Ontario on Council's LRT transit priority. Therefore, be it resolved, Part A, the Council's February 27, 2013 decision requesting 100% provincial capital funding from the province of Ontario for a B-Line LRT on King Street be reaffirmed. Part B, reads that the Mayor be directed to represent City Council's position on a B-Line LRT on King Street to other government agencies and the private sector. Part C, that the Mayor be directed to include Councillors Farr, Ferguson and McCaddy when communicating on Council transit priorities with the province of Ontario. And lastly, Part D, that a copy of Council's February 27, 2013 resolution respecting a B-Line LRT on King Street and a copy of this motion be forwarded to the Premier, the Minister of Transportation and Hamilton Area MPPs. And Mr. Mayor, if I can speak to that. Yeah, please. <clears throat> We uh, earlier uh, tonight, uh, under uh, correspondence, we uh, received uh, several email uh, pieces of correspondence from the community that that uh, supported uh, the importance of of uh, emphasizing pri our priority of the B line on uh, on King Street, the LRT uh, work that we've done, and, and I think that was important. I uh, received a, a number of emails uh, like that over the past week or so. Those are just examples of those. It's, uh, it's, it's particularly important uh, to, uh, to make sure the province of Ontario understands what our priority is. Uh, the, the real danger in not uh, having that uh, clearly uh, specified by council and by the mayor uh, is, is the concern over mixed messages uh, going to the province. And uh, as uh, council knows, uh, the uh, province of Ontario, Metrolinx, uh, has a number of requests for funding uh, right across the GTA and Hamilton. For, uh, for rapid transit funding, uh, whether it be Mississauga or Durham, certainly Toronto has a lot of priorities as well. And it's gonna be pretty easy for the province of Ontario to, uh, to ignore Hamilton if, uh, if, if, our, if we're sending mixed messages or if we're not being clear on what our priority is. Uh, that's always an option for uh, any level of government uh, uh, funding a municipality. If it's not clear and it uh, appears uh, confused or uh, perhaps uh, controversial in any way, they, uh, they could very well uh, just choose to skip Hamilton with, uh, with the funding. That's a real concern for our city. We don't want to jeopardize that funding. funding. And it's critical uh, in this case, in, in all cases of course, but certainly in this case with the funding pending, uh, that the council and the mayor are aligned on the council position. That report uh, that we uh, had in February the uh, rapid ready report that uh, council received at GIC and ratified uh, unanimously, 100%, including yourself, yeah. and it went on to council with the same unanimous uh, support. 
was a comprehensive report. It talked about uh, really a whole vision for Hamilton, talking about growth along our nodes and corridors, the, uh, the B line uh, in particular on King Street, and the redevelopment that we would expect to uh, realize as a result of the LRT investment. Uh, it also spoke to a number of other uh, transit needs we have across the city, and it was comprehensive in that way. Uh, and I know, uh, Mr. Mayor, you've spoken about uh, the, uh, the A-Line in particular, uh, heading up the mountain uh, from the, from the bayfront to, uh, to the airport uh, past uh, Mohawk College and, and some of those areas. We have, uh, those are two rapid transit uh, facilities, the B-Line, which we're focusing on as our council position. The A-Line is certainly talked about in that report as well. And three additional uh, rapid transit lines. You remember uh, the uh, acronym BLAST, uh, B-L-A-S-T, and there were, were uh, uh, five different uh, rapid transit lines talked about uh, in that report. Um, so it, it, I can see how, uh, Mr. Mayor, you, you may have uh, seen that those were all listed in that report, and including the A-Line, and probably reference to the, the GO Train work as well that you've done uh, certainly on, already on the James Street Station, but then to carry on uh, further east is also uh, an interest, a strong interest, I would suggest, for Hamilton. However, it's very, very important that the province of Ontario understand that for the last three to four years with Metrolink's dollars, and uh, about $10 million in total has been spent, uh, the majority of that provincial dollars, but also some of our local dollars as well through our capital budget, preparing a 30% design for the uh, LRT B line on King Street. And you'll remember, uh, members of council, Mr. Mayor, you'll remember uh, visits from Metrolinx uh, uh, where they, uh, we, we had uh, discussions with them. Uh, one of the discussions was, you know, how do we stack up against the other municipalities in terms of the work that we're doing? And John Howe, who was uh, most often the representative uh, from Metrolinx in those discussions, said, you know, you're, you're ahead of any other municipality in your 30% uh, your, uh, design for your priority, your B-line along King Street. So we talked about it at a, a number of different meetings uh, over that three to four year period. Metrolinx uh, talked about it as well during that period. They were also very clear that that was the work that we were doing and we received staff updates on it uh, throughout that period of time. So I think at this point uh, it, it's, it's critical uh, that we uh, uh, make it very clear what our priority is and that we ask uh, you, Mr. Mayor, to, to uh, take that position of the B-Line uh, uh, LRT on King Street and also advocate for that uh, in your uh, uh, discussions with the province of Ontario with Metrolinx and uh, we've asked that uh, the members of the LRT task force, uh, councillors Ferguson, Fire and myself also be uh, uh, brought in uh, during those discussions that you have at the provincial level. Extremely important at this point. Uh, so at, at this point just as I, uh, as I finish my comments Mr. Mayor I'd, I'd like uh, to ask you uh, uh, given what I anticipate will be a, a positive uh, vote uh, uh, on this uh, motion that uh, I'm, I'm uh, speaking to right now. Uh, if in fact uh, council reaffirms its earlier position of a B-Line LRT on King Street, Mr. Mayor, will you represent that position uh, when you uh, visit uh, the Premier or perhaps the Minister of Transportation, other provincial representatives, uh, Metrolinx, asking for the $811, $811 million dollars that we need to build the B-Line LRT on King Street, Mr. Mayor. Question to you on that, please. Well, thank you. Councillor, there's nothing else I can do under the mandate of the procedural bylaw and the Municipal Act. I have to represent that position, and I have represented that position. And the position, to me, is what's in this document, which is the Rapid Ready document, which was approved by Council. So I guess the the, it, it's the word priority that seems to be the stumbling block because originally when we work the word priority originally referred to in fact I should hand the chair over to Councillor uh, or Deputy I'll take the chair Mr. Okay. Mayor so through you Mr. Deputy Mayor the, the original priority was LRT over BRT bus rapid transit that's what we engaged with when we said what would we really like and we said we would really like the LRT over the BRT. To me, that was where priority came in. So I'm confused now, Mr. Deputy Mayor, because this document says that 
the first key contributor to becoming rapid ready is to invest in improving transit services and reconfigure the transit network in anticipation of rapid transit. And in this case, put the L back in, late, because that's our priority. Uh, these early investments would increase ridership, elevate the role of public transit in Hamilton, and prepare customers for rapid transit implementation. So, if, if the priority, if what you mean by priority through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, is uh, that upon the approval of the funding, that we immediately start building the B line rapid transit uh, line, LRT line. I just need a motion from council to to do that because what what I have presented is, and Bruce McQuaig and I met several times, I met with him this morning, and it's this document that he refers to, which we approve. And, and the document does not say uh, the creation of the light rail transit line upon funding approval. It doesn't say that. In fact, on page 25, it says, just to be clear, because I, I, I'm puzzled by this, the use of the word priority in terms of this document. It says, build, just building rapid transit alone will not get Hamilton where it needs to be. Cities that have or are moving towards rapid transit are also making significant increases in base transit service levels in advance of rapid transit. It would not be productive for Hamilton to build light rail while maintaining 30 minute headways on regular transit routes serving LRT. And what that means is how long you have to wait for the bus that takes you down to the LRT uh, and therefore makes the service function better. And and it says here, it's on page 25 of the document that we approve unanimously. Several Canadian cities have higher per capita ridership without rapid transit, demonstrating an opportunity to increase ridership in the interim prior to LRT implementation in Hamilton. So if you wish me to present to the minister and to the premier that once the funding is approved, that construction of the V-Line LRT begin, I'll be happy to, but that's not what I've had to this point. So, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that's my response to the Council. Thank you, Councillor McCaddy. You still have the floor. Mr. Deputy Mayor, thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor, for your response. I guess if I can maybe then, uh, given, given uh, those comments, I wonder if I can go back to item A in this, in this particular uh, motion, and it reads that Council's February 27, 2013 decision requesting 100% provincial capital funding from the yeah. province of Ontario for a B-line LRT on King Street be reaffirmed. I, I wonder if, uh, I guess maybe a two-part question uh, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to, to the Mayor. Uh, does, does that provide you with, with the clarity that, uh, that I, I think that was, was meant uh, by our discussions in February as, as a council, and of course the work over the previous three years on, on the LRT 30% design and on King Street. Uh, does that provide you with the clarity you need to represent that position, or, or can you suggest some uh, some other uh, wording that uh, might uh, be uh, be clearer uh, through Mr. Deputy Mayor to, to the Mayor? Okay, if I may, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Yeah. The discussion over 100% funding is no longer necessary because the province wants to implement a funding strategy which will pay for all of the Metrolink's wave of projects. So the issue before us is, do we sign on to the Metrolink's funding strategy when it comes forward? And so we're waiting now for Mr. Zagarek to come forward and tell us what the implications are. And to, as far as today, when, when we, earlier when we talked about 100% funding, it sort of sounded like it was going to come from maybe the province and the feds and, and we aren't signing, like there, there's no property tax portion. But what we will, Mr. Deputy Mayor, in fact, have to provide with the province is the agreement that we will participate in the funding strategy. And that the implications of that are such that it could be from the average householder in the city of Hamilton, somewhere in the eight, hundred, eight hundred and sixty dollars per household to put into the strategy fund 
that will, from which the 100% will come back. So the argument over 100% is, is really not appropriate anymore because if we're in and we want to go ahead and we sign on to the, the Metrolink's funding strategy, we will get it all paid for. But for 17 years, our average householder will be paying something over $800 a month for the duration. So that's the issue that's now before council is to hear the information, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through to the councilor. Hear what the impacts are. Sit around here and say, are we in or not? And it's got nothing to do anymore with beelines or what the mayor says to the premier. It doesn't. It's in council's hands. But if you want me to say something different than what's in this document, you have to tell, a, a, get a council resolution to say, upon the funding strategy being agreed upon, the B-Line LRT will immediately start construction. So, Mr. Mayor, maybe just uh, one more um, question on this then. So, uh, let's just say that, that you're uh, speaking to uh, Premier Wynne or perhaps Minister Murray or, or other folks at the province or Metrolinx, and they ask, uh, you know what, we've got some money for Hamilton, uh, $800 million. Uh, Mr. Mayor, what's Council's position on where that money should go specifically, uh, rather than just $800 million to transit in Hamilton? Uh, would, would, uh, I'm just trying to get a sense of what you would say to that, uh, given the position we've got here in Item A, which speaks to the BL, BL, B-Line LRT on King Street. Uh, would you say perhaps the A-Line, or would you say uh, GO Train service to Centennial Parkway? Or with this motion that we've got here on item, item A, do you feel comfortable uh, saying uh, councils uh, reaffirm the position of a B-Line LRT on King Street? Uh, just trying to get a sense, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, of, of how you would respond to that question. Or again, and I think I heard it a moment ago, I'll have to get the wording from you, uh, whether you need that changed, uh, item A, uh, to be clear. Uh, I think you, you said something about, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, about upon uh, receiving the funding, uh, uh, the, the B-Line will be constructed, something along those lines. Immediately, I just right. uh, trying to clarify that position, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor, three to Mr. Mayor. Deputy Mayor. Okay, thank you. So once again, this document builds transit ridership to the point where LRT now kicks in. It says it over and over again. Don Hall said it in his silhouette newspaper on October 25th, 2011. Bruce McQuaig said it on a Cable 14 show that I have. Without prompting for me, he was just discussing this document, and he talked about just what I, I just said. You, you build the ridership, then you put the LRT in. If it's council's position that the B line is now changing the priority from BRT to we're not, we're going to we're going to begin the construction of it because. The other thing that has been mentioned by staff is that it could be 10 to 15 years before those numbers get in place because this document shows, for instance, these are Canadian cities. These ones are Canadian cities with transit. Calgary has uh, service uh, ridership versus service hours per capita, 88 riders uh, per uh, service hour per capita, and Calgary's the lowest of all the tr rapid transit, and light rail transit. Hamilton is at 44. So Hamilton's ridership is half of what Calgary's is. And so what this document says is you build that, then you put the tracks in the ground. That's what it says. Okay, yeah, so, so uh, I'll, I'll just finish up, Mr. Okay. Deputy Mayor, last, uh, last sentence or two. Uh, I'll take that as a no, uh, that the mayor of Hamilton will not support uh, our, the BLN LRT position on King Street uh, to the to uh, the province. Uh, uh, no, I'm that's, sorry. Uh, that's, I can't that's unfortunate. Um, I can't accept but, uh, that. I'll come back to you, Mr. Mayor. But, uh, I, I asked a very clear question uh, several different ways, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I'm uh, perhaps a bit frustrated that I didn't get a clear answer uh, uh, whether this position will be uh, supported uh, by the mayor at the province. I, I heard a number of things. Uh, I didn't hear that this position would be supported uh, if we pass this motion. Uh, 
in a couple of moments tonight. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Mr. Mayor, Deputy Mayor. Mayor. I absolutely 100% support the B-Line LRT as directed by Council, as directed through this document. The word priority is not in this document. So if you want to add the word priority, get a motion from Council and explain what priority means. And if priority means we go to the B-Line as soon as the money becomes, as soon as the funding strategy is. I, I don't have that direction, Councilor. But if you're asking me if I support, and when I speak to governments, all I say to them is, here is our thing, and it's got a B-Line LRT, and that's the one that we have said is, is going first, and, and that's it. So the answer was not no, Councilor. You have to tell me what you mean by priority and get council direction if it's different from this. So is that, has anything through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, has anything I said changed anything that's in this document? Okay, I have a speaker's list. If you like, Mr. Mayor, do you want me to keep the chair through sure, this debate? Sure, please keep the chair. I have a speaker's list of Councillor Clark and Councillor Collins, Councillor Marula, Councillor Whitehead. Councillor Clark. Thank you, um, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and I thank Council McCaddy for bringing forth the the motion for us to discuss this to try and clarify a few things. Um, I'd like to, to caution my colleagues um, to really pay attention to what's in that document that we voted unanimously to send to Metrolinx. I know we've also indicated that our dream position you know, they will build it and they will come is the LRT. And we've also stated that the province will pay for it 100%. Those are all givens. But when I've read that document cover to cover, that document we have given great latitude to the province of Ontario and Metrolinx. As. And I understand that because I've been in those shoes at the other end trying to figure out how they're going to pay for everything. Um, I am very nervous about now taking out a stark position that it's LRT or nothing. I'm afraid we need to be very clear in our language that we put forth to the province because it's their call and it's not our call. And if we get into a position where we're pushing for LRT at 100% funding and they're supposed to be paying for it, which I want to speak to in another second, it could put the entire project and all that money that we put into that document into a precarious situation. And they may just say, no, they're not ready. They have that right. I know people don't want to hear that but I've seen it and experienced it with governments before where decisions have made and they'll say they have to make the tough decisions. They'll say Hazel McCallion is ready, they'll say these other municipalities are ready and you're not there yet. I have grave concerns pushing the 100% envelope now when Premier Wynne has indicated that she's not paying 100%. Made it very clear in three different meetings that she was present at, she made it clear to municipalities and trade sectors that the municipalities will be paying. But there's going to be mechanisms for that. She's made it clear that each municipality will be paying for their transit line, whatever it is. So if we choose LRT, if that's what comes to be, or rapid transit comes to be, and then in 10 years you have LRT, whatever the prognostication that comes true here, the citizens in Hamilton will be paying for it. The province will pay their portion, 
but the larger portion comes back to the city. And they are talking about increases in provincial sales tax only in Hamilton. They are talking about gas tax increases only in Hamilton. So when you leave Hamilton and go to another municipality, it would be a different tax. Uh, they are talking about um, unilateral increases on property taxes only in Hamilton. So all of that is out there. And if we continue to go down the road and say, yep, we're going to do it, but it's going to be 100% funding, no impact to us, then they will come up with the ways and means to pay for it, and they have the legal right in law to actually set up the taxes to force it upon any municipality they want. We have no control over that either. My preference, personally, um, would be that we not argue over back and forth when people make musings in the public about anything because the only thing that counts out of this place is the resolution that was passed by this council. It's the only thing that counts. Greatest respect, Mr. Mayor, and it might hurt your feelings, doesn't matter what you say to the Premier one-on-one. -on -one. I understand. Doesn't matter at all. Mm -hmm. Because the only thing that government can deal with is a resolution of this council. That's the only thing that counts. They may know that he doesn't like it. He wants to go in another direction. Doesn't matter because it's the resolution of the council that counts. Go back and talk to previous mayors like Mel Lastman and about how that can bite them on the tail. This council has made a decision. We submitted that document. We're waiting for a response back from the province. We're waiting for something in writing to clarify exactly what our financial costs would be under this proposal. And we're waiting to understand how they're proposing to implement this. Is it a phased in process? Is it going to be done quickly? Is it going to take 10 years, 15 years? I don't know. I am loath to now throw up another document into the air and cause confusion with decision makers when at the present time there's no confusion at Queen's Park about the position of Hamilton. That's the way it is. I'm sorry if I disagree with some folks and, and, and some people in the community out there are saying that the, the, the mayor has lost his mind and a few other things that he shouldn't be saying these things. As I indicated, it's the resolution of this council that counts, nothing else. It doesn't matter. It could be a complete pain in our butt and we get phone calls because you've mused these things. You get phone calls because I muse things. It happens. Get over it. That's what it is. But as long as this council doesn't change its position, this document is not necessary. Our positions are even filed. We're waiting for a response. And I surely wouldn't want to have the Premier be confused with another position coming out and they turn around and say we're okay with whatever, because we're saying 100% funding. Oh, see, Hamilton's okay with them province taxing us whatever they want on transit because I haven't talked about that with my community I don't even know what they're really talking about with the fine I know the proposed 800 and some odd dollars but I have no idea what their final proposal is going to be Mr. Zagarek has not given me any financial assessment on it I do not know what the impact would be on the economy I do not know what the impact would be on jobs I do not know anything about these proposed taxes that Kathleen Wynne has mused about, incidentally, and her cabinet haven't voted on. So let's be calm, stick with what we've done, let's see what comes out of them in writing, and then we can respond accordingly. Let's not get too far out because some people in the community are agitated that um, we're not sticking to our guns. Stuck to our guns right to the point where we should be. Now let's get a response from the government before we go any further. That would be my preference. And, and, and we need it in writing. Not just with the greatest respect to the Premier, she can go to the meetings at the Trade Council and say whatever she wants. It's still musings. She's throwing up balloons in the air to see whether or not anyone's going to shoot them down. And if all the municipalities keep saying, no, we're all still on side, then those taxes are going to come true wait and see what she actually has in writing and then we can respond firmly and unanimously I would suspect given the past pattern of this council. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Collins. 
So very briefly, uh, I'm, I guess I was shocked as anyone to, to see that this is back in front of us, but I, I understand why it's here. Um, I, I'm trying to understand, um, and I certainly take in, I, with the greatest of respect, I understand the comments that have been made by everyone around the table. And the concern that I would have is that mix, mixed messages coming out of this building, especially regarding the most important issues that face our community, um, can do nothing other than to derail, pardon the pun, um, some very important work that we're undertaking to try to move this city forward. And so I'm, I, uh, like others, um, I appreciate the mayor's uh, explanation tonight. I, I'm, I'm not certain that I understand it, but I appreciate the fact that he's provided that to us. And, and I'm, uh, like Councillor Clark, it's, uh, I guess the message is it's a waiting game from Toronto. We're, we're, we're waiting to understand certainly what the cost will be to the municipality, and I've tried to follow these numbers as, as close as possible to to the, the numbers as they've been changing over the years. Um, and, and when I reference the numbers, it's not just the capital costs, it's the operating costs, it's the magic number that the province says uh, is going to be the city's contribution for one or both of those sides of the ledger. But I think we, we've learned, we should learn from our mistakes, and I would point to the stadium debate to illustrate the fact that when we're constantly responding to comments that um, are trying to sway public opinion, and I understand the environment that we work in, and I understand the fact that around this table we're going to have different opinions from time to time, but when those opinions start to, uh, I guess, jeopardize, some might say, um, projects, funding, resources from other levels of government, I think it's appropriate that, that we deal with these issues in a very open way as is happening tonight. So one of the concerns that I have from earlier and uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, would be maybe the mayor could elaborate. I'm, I thought I heard um, you say that we were looking at a cost of anywhere in the range of $800 per month per house for the initiative that we've prospectively endorsed. And, and I, I, that's a new number for me. I was going to ask finance staff where that number's come from. Is, is that a number that's been part of this equation? If it's been reported in the media, I apologize, I haven't read that. Or if it's come from Metrolinx, again, I'm, I'm maybe not as close to the issue as you are with your discussions with the provincial government, but $800 per month per house for any project that we undertake is a lot of money. And I would hate again, with that mixed messaging, looking back to the stadium, I would hate for that to cause us more problems. Um, and really, we, I mean, think our goal and objective is to try to solve problems here and not create them. So I. My first question would be through you, Mr. Chairman, to the Mayor, where, where the $800 comes from, and then my second question would be to finance staff in terms of what number are we looking at currently, or are we still in, as was referenced earlier, sort of a fact-finding mode where we're trying to determine what the cost is to the municipality and then by extension per house. Through you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. So thank you, and, and so I think all of us should be curious as to how this funding is going to work, and so I've been trying to figure out a way to capture that amount, but in the panel at the civic action event, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, Councillor Minin Wong was representing the Toronto Mayor, and there were two or three other mayors on the panel, and Mr. Minin Wong stepped up and said, it's going to cost us $860 a household through the, this financing plan per year, year oh. for 17 years of the duration of the plan. So I went up right after the meeting and said, where did you get that number? And he, Mr. Deputy Mayor, said, I got it from staff. The next day or two, and I can forward you the email, I thought I did actually, but there was an article in the Toronto Sun, and it was Joe Panichetti, the city manager, who presented that number as the number that they have crunched based on their review of the funding tools that it seems it's going to be somewhere in that area. So the other one that I thought of was the health premium. And the health premium is $900 a year, whether it goes to health or not. It's, and it raised $3 billion, it does raise $3 billion a year. So it sounds like that number is somewhere in, in the right orbit. But that number, and I forwarded the information to Mr. Zagarek, Mr. Deputy Mayor, and asked him to review it and see if that's a number that's useful for us 
So that's my answer as to where the $860 came from. It was published in the Toronto Sun. So that is a Toronto number that might not necessarily be Hamilton's number. I, I don't know. That's the only number that I've been able to get so far, but I did give it to staff okay. to review it and see whether it would be useful for us. Through you then, Mr. Chairman, can I ask to staff, are we any closer to understanding what the yearly number might be for its impact on Hamilton taxpayers? Whether it's $800 or another figure, I'll, I'll take whatever information they have at this point in time. Mr. Segar? For you, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, with respect to the financing strategy and how it might impact participating municipalities, uh, I can't share with Council as to what the local impact would be as I don't have any details as to the staging of the next wave as it relates to the big move as well as the uh, collection of funding that's required to fund uh, the next wave of uh, the big move. I believe the reference to the $860 is simply uh, looking at the annual funding requirement of $2 billion in the GTHA and if you were to uh, distribute that cost equally across all the households within that region, what the average cost would be. Uh, but again, that's, that is just a... Um, that's, that's in the absence, to be clear, that's in the absence of a financing strategy coming forward to cover some or all of those funds through whatever means government has at their fingertips. Yep. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that, that is in the absence of an understanding as to what the staging of the investment would be and the timing of the collection of the revenues across all the participating municipalities. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. And I and see that it is confusing because, you know, to use those numbers without putting them into context, it can cause um, certainly some people to form an opinion. And, um, you know, I think if you were to say to me that it was going to be $800 per month per house, I, I, and I was sitting at home listening to this debate, I, I certainly know what my position would be on a project like this. Um, some, for some, financing certainly is an issue, but for others, um, you know, the taxes collected by whether it's the municipal, provincial, federal government are, are the issue for them. And so I, we need to be very careful, Mr. Chairman, in terms of, um, you know, what information we're, we're providing to the public as it relates to this project and others. And, um, and I'm going to support uh, what's in front of us here tonight. I think it's an important uh, step forward to ensure that the, the citizens know that um, we haven't changed our mind, similar to what happened with the, uh, with the stadium issue. Uh, where our position changed almost uh, every other week or every other month based on what somebody was saying in the media because they had um, an idea and had access to the province and there were plans being made uh, in other places other than this building here. And so I, I, the last thing I want to do is end up in the same kind of situation. And, um, and so I'm going to support what's here tonight. I appreciate the information that was provided by the mayor and staff. And um, I also thank Councillor McCaddy for... Uh, showing leadership here this evening and over the last couple of weeks, especially, well, even further on LRT, but for, for bringing this forward for the reasons that he uh, enunciated earlier. So thank you. Um, Councillor Marula. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor. And, uh, I just need to understand why we're even having this discussion. Uh, my understanding is that this all started because the Hamilton Spectator reported that we, as a city council and a city, had an ultimatum between uh, choosing gold transit, all day gold transit, and LRT. We were then told by our mayor that, that, that the Hamilton Spectator uh, created fiction. And the Hamilton Spectator responded by saying they didn't. In all the years that I've dealt with them, I can honestly say, and I've had some significant battles with the Hamilton Spectator in my time. I've never been misquoted. So my question to you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to, to Mr. Mayor, are you stating that the Hamilton Spectator fabricated a story? The story is inaccurate, Councillor, through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, but I, I would ask Councillor in my response to you. Councillor McCaddy, did you say that I was willfully stupid, which was quoted in the spectator. I, Wait, I don't you. think uh, you had a question asked directly to you, Mr. Mayor. 
Oh, no, Councilor Marula has the floor. He's asked me for the I, accuracy I, I, I of the story. I can come back to you later if you want as a speaker okay. where you can ask any question you want to. But right now, Councilor Marula has placed a question to you. Is a, a, is a story in the inspector that the word you was accurate. fabricated? Yeah. Is, is it fabricated or not? From your perspective, did you or did you not say what they claimed? The Hamilton Spectator quoted you as saying. That's all I need to the know. The story is inaccurate. Councillor McCaddy, did you say that I was willfully stupid? That was quoted in the paper. Councillor McCaddy, don't answer sir, that question until the mayor has the floor question. and then I'll have him. Is it fabricated or it's not? It's, I don't the story want to get, is inaccurate. This whole thing is a distraction. I, don't I think, know I think you've got an answer, Councillor Marula, who says it was inaccurate. It's inaccurate, so so it's fiction. So that's, you that's how I would interpret that. Yes. Yeah. So, I'll, uh, see, through you, Mr. Uh, Deputy Mayor, that that is a very serious allegation. You, you know, you're in broadcasting, so to call somebody a liar didn't do it. Okay, Councillor Marula, you have the floor. Through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I'm hearing that he didn't call them a liar, but he is calling them a liar. I know he has various positions and du duplicity on positions, but. He, they either are accurate or they're not accurate. I know for a fact that if I were the Hamilton Spectator, whether they're a, a corporate entity, which they are, or as an individual, if someone calls me a liar, I can assure you that I would come out swinging. So I'm surprised they haven't come out swinging. I think they've treated you with a kid gloves to now, based on that particular uh, issue, only because uh, the media relies on their on their truthfulness, on their, you know this, on, on the accuracy. Everything that their existence depends on is the fact that what they report is accurate. So I'm asking the mayor of the city, are you calling them the Hamilton Spectator, the corporate entity who is the voice of this community since, I don't know, 1867 or whatever it was, liars? No. Couch, couch, couch. To oh. you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to Mr. Mayor. No. Which then begs the question, did you lie? Then someone's lying, and so. Well, I, I'm not sure we need to drill down any more on this. You okay. heard him say that okay. the story and was I'll leave it at that, but we still don't have any clarity. We've wasted a lot of time on this issue because we know what our position is, and the only reason why we're here is because of that very issue. So all I'm asking for is either an apology, a retraction, an understanding, because at this point, you can't have the spectator lying and the mayor lying all at the same time. One, one or the other is correct. And, I, and I'm, I'm baffled by this whole thing. So well, I, th I think the, the, the publisher the all the community is asking for is honesty. The public inspector wrote a and column I, on it on the weekend, so I think we're, we are where we are. And, and, and that's the unfortunate component to all this, because I don't want to get distracted by who said what or, or what have you. I just want to know, okay, why are we even wasting our time with this? Because we know what our position is. The only reason why we're here is because you called the Hamilton Spectator liars. And, and that's basically the point of it. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. And uh, next speaker is Councillor Whitehead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I guess actually there's a fundamental uh, underlying issue for me that's more concerning, uh, and, uh, and, and, and it's unfortunate that we're here uh, with this particular motion. By the way, I did support uh, the B line, although uh, in my heart of hearts, I think the A line is the right way to go. But having said that, that was the corporate decision, and that's the one that I've been articulating because uh, it was a unanimous vote. I voted for it, and I stand behind that particular position. Never changed my mind on it, and I still will take that position because that was a, a unified uh, position around this this horseshoe. I guess what concerns me, and I guess the underlying issue for me is, is when we take a position, for example, on the downloading, and then on a Monday morning uh, I hear a voice that uh, completely uh, defends the province on the shortchanging of the, the the city on the downloading. Uh, and, and, and that's the unanimous decision of this council, and it's not being represented, it concerns me. When I read a paper and, and it indicates that, uh, that uh, it's either LRT or Gold Transit to Stony Creek, and then I'm hearing the Premier deny that the comment was ever made by them, but it's being attributed to the Mayor, it concerns me. And I don't know what is true or what is false, but when you t start lining up the ducks, there's a few of these incidents that have taken place. And that concerns me. So cumulatively, the underlying issue is do we have faith that the corporation, the city council's position that we take is clearly being articulated or undermined? That's the real underlying issue. And that's why this is in front of us here today. That's, that's the primary reason. 
And then, of course, now we're going to be judged and jury, and I'm not very comfortable doing that. I think that uh, there's a message that could better be uh, uh, talked about with the mayor directly, if he was receptive to do that, but we haven't had too much reception with the mayor in the last two years. Uh, to be able to sit down with him and talk about the fact that we can't have mixed messages and we can't feel like we're being undermined as a council. And that's always been my concern is that we need to be a team, we have a great team around this horseshoe, and the mayor needs to be part of that team and we welcome him to be part of that team, and yet that's certainly not been the experience at, uh, around this table. I think those are the underlying issues that need to be addressed and the message to the mayor is whether he's right or wrong on this, I'm not going to judge. It's not for me to judge, it's for you to reflect. And I'm hoping that we can uh, build on this relationship, understand that whatever position this council takes, you have a fiduciary responsibility under the Municipal Act to reflect those positions to the province of Ontario. Thank you, and I have three speakers left. Uh, I myself is next, and then Councillor Fire, and I think Mayor Bertina, you wanted an opportunity to go back yeah. on the list also. Yeah. And, and so I'm going to hand the chair off to last year's, last month's Deputy Mayor, Councillor Johnson. And I just want to give a, a, an explanation as to why I agree to second this motion. Um, if you look back through history, I think this, that the LRT is a defining project for our city. Um, you know, 60 years ago, uh, history will show us that there was a, a similar debate on transportation across the province, you know, tied into the same issues of congestion uh, when the province decided they wanted to build a fixed access highway or controlled access highway from Windsor to Montreal. Today, the 401 is the engine that drives the province. Uh, 40 years ago, right here in this council chambers, started the discussion about we need a ring road, subject of lots of debate, a lot of dissenting positions, but at the end of the day, it was built, and uh, it's now the engine that's driving a lot of our economic development, particularly at the Red Hill Industrial Park. We've seen incredible growth there. And I think LRT is one of those issues that goes beyond the next election, or even the next election, and maybe even the next election. These one, this is an issue where you've got to be visionary, you've got to look out there, you've got to make a decision that could make a big difference in the future, similar to the 401 and similar to our ring road. But as I look back over the last few months, I think the stars have aligned, and we need to take advantage of this. I've heard the Premier, I was at an event a week ago Sunday, where she said she supports LRT in Hamilton. Uh, I heard her say, and I heard the Vice President of Metrolink stand at that podium, and I point blank asked him the question, uh, is the province going to pay 100% of the capital cost of this? And his answer was, and you can check the tape, that's our model. And I heard the Premier say the same thing, that this should not be done on the backs of the property taxpayer, particularly the residential taxpayer in any particular community. And, and, and so it can't be done on the backs of the residential taxpayer because it's just one of those mega projects, uh, the two examples I gave at the start of my, my talk. But we can't put the project at risk by putting out mixed messages, and that's what I'm hearing. And uh, there's lots of competition, as Councillor McCaddy said, for this money. Uh, Mississauga's chomping at the bit, even though it's been described that we're, we're ahead of them, technically. Um, we invested $10 million. Now, about seven of that, I, uh, Mr. Cigar told me, was paid for by the province, or other levels of government. There was some federal funding in that also. I reviewed this in detail with him yesterday. To do a 30% design of the B-Line, because this council said B-Lines are a choice. And, and uh, so we've done the 30% design, which is the minimum design you can do in order to be able to calculate the capital cost, and handed that off through a report to Metrolinx. But this is, a, this is a motion just again to make it clear, because in my view there are still mixed messages out there which will put the projects at risk. If I was sitting at the Metrolinx or the province, and I heard mixed messages, I would say, until they get their crap in order, let's move on to another municipality who's united and are saying the exact same thing, whether it's staff, whether it's a mayor, or whether it's council, there's the same message coming out. It's a get out of jail free card for them when there's mixed messages coming out. And if the province is going to put in place a, a new tax structure, and that's their decision, not ours, this will be a province-wide, maybe, new tax, or could be the specific to the Greater Toronto Hamilton area. So whether we get it or not, we're going to be paying. And we damn well deserve a look. And they won't look when we're sending mixed messages. And, and three examples of mixed messages that have occurred recently is 
where the heck did $800 per person come from? There's no science to that. It's just a number that came out by some councillor for Toronto. Then come out of Mr. Zagarek's office, who is our financial CFO. I've heard, uh, you know, the mayor, you said to me privately and you said it publicly that your preferred route is the A line. You've been very clear about that, even though council has been very clear, is B line, and we invested $10 million to do a 30% design. We can't have that mixed message go out there. And, and, and then the latest, and, and you say that the story was inaccurate, but it's out there, that we have to make a choice between go, extension, and light rail. That's a mixed message. I've never heard that, that before from anyone. And, and if the story was inaccurate, then the story was inaccurate. But I think you needed to come up more definitively the minute that story hit and say, that's inaccurate. And, and get a hold of the publisher of the spectator, which is the routine, just if you think they're wrong, and have them print a retraction or you know, make a correction. I, I read, Your microphone. I read the, mic, the, uh, the publisher of the Hamilton Spectator wrote a column saying, we stand behind our story and we stand behind our reporter. So they must have either a recording or the tape or notes, whatever they used in, in order to substantiate their story. So I just think we need this motion right now to make it crystal clear. Beeline, 100% funding and, and clear message. Because if they're going to put a new tax in place for the greater Toronto Hamilton area, we darn well better be part of it. You know, uh, you hear the $800 uh, per person for Toronto. They're spending billions in Toronto on transit. We're asking for $800 million. Now, if we hear a number like $800, as, as Councillor Collins says, that whipsaws back to us in a formal way, and, and our CFO says, yep, that's a number. We may want to think about this a little more. I agree. That's a stunning number. And, and I, I'm uncomfortable with that. But they figured out how to build the 401. We figured out how to build the Red Elk Creek Expressway. This is a defining project. Let's not screw it up by putting out mixed messages. And with that, I'll take the chair back. You've got it. No and, other speakers and except move Councillor it over Clark. Now to, uh, Clark I have other speakers time. now, yes. Uh, Councillor Farr is up next. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Um, I've been listening closely tonight, and I appreciate the motion, of course, be supporting the motion before us. It's a reaffirmation motion, I guess, before us uh, tonight. I'll be listening closely in a few weeks as Mr. Zagarek delivers uh, his analysis along with his uh, finance staff's analysis of uh, this um, funding toolbox that we've been hearing a lot about lately from uh, the Premier's office. And uh, I'm appreciating, I guess, uh, hearing about it. At least uh, she's quite vocal and clearly quite supportive of fixing uh, what needs to be fixed with respect to GTHA uh, transportation. Uh, I had an opportunity to actually have a, a decent conversation with the Transportation Minister at a uh, Transit Futures Symposium a couple of weeks ago. And, you know, uh, I just uh, sat... Uh, in uh, confirmation of all the things we've done and all the work that we've done in the past as he talked about building communities and uh, more than just talk about gridlock but talk about um, um, you know um, uh, how uh, uh, LRT how you can really fix gridlock by uh, creating live work communities and I think when you look at our, our council approved notes and corridor study as it relates to this beeline. If you look at uh, the, the, uh, the costs of not doing LRT and all of those things, it's, it's uh, clear that even the transportation minister uh, uh, sees it and sees what we've been working on for some time. Um, and when it comes to this toolbox funding, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I think at this point, if there's going to be a, a GTH pool, uh, we want to jump in first. And uh, if we're going to be paying for these transit priorities throughout this GTHA, um, let's get at it with our, our priority that is the LRT. So uh, we know the value and we know what it'll achieve here in Hamilton. And with respect to some of the items mentioned tonight with the Rapid Ready Report, which is a vast report, which is an extremely important report, which is obviously why it was unanimously approved by this body not long ago, um, I'm not too, too concerned. I know that uh, uh, we can, as we lay the track, do those things that will make this investment um, uh, important and uh, make this investment uh, uh, a reality. We are going to invest, we are going to improve, we are going to reconfigure in anticipation of our priority, which is uh, LRT. And, uh, in short, we're going to get rapid ready as we build the thing and pay for the thing, along with 
if the toolbox goes the way I see it going, everyone else in the GTHA and quite possibly, as the previous speaker mentioned, the provinces we've heard uh, Premier Wynne and others uh, talk about. So I think we're on our way, uh, even with the Rapid Ready report, when you look at things like our, our, uh, our bikes that we approved, our dedicated bus lanes, that's us already getting to work on being rapid ready, LRT ready. So with that, I just wanted to do a uh, amendment. I'm not certain if I would call it a uh, friendly amendment, but on, on the resolved uh, part A, that council's February 27th, 2013 decision requesting 100% provincial capital funding from the province of Ontario for a beeline LRT on King Street, and I would insert priority project there, be reaffirmed. The words priority project, after King Street is all I'm asking as an amendment, and I would move that and get a seconder in Councillor Marula. Okay, uh, so we have to focus on the amendment now. And uh, so can you just uh, once again read back exactly what the amendment says? How Councilor? it will sound with the amendment, which is the words priority project after King Street. So in item A of what we have before us, the Council's February 27th, 2000. 13 decision requesting 100% provincial capital funding from the province of Ontario for a beeline LRT on King Street priority project be reaffirmed. Okay, you're adding the word priority project then, are you? That's I'm adding that. Those okay, two and to, to the amendment now, Councillor Seconded Caddy. by Councillor uh, Marullo. Right, Councillor Caddy, Councillor Clark on the amendment. Mr. Uh, Mr. Deputy Mayor, I, I think that's a helpful amendment uh, and uh, it, it, uh, it was brought to buy and by me uh, uh, during Councillor Clark's uh, comments uh, a couple moments ago, when he uh, he made the point that uh, he didn't want the province to, uh, to to only see the B line as as the only thing we wanted, if they were to give us something else, we would say no, which is certainly not where you want to be. Uh, you've got uh, the priority project, and, and that's that's uh, uh, the point we're making tonight with this motion, and I, I accept that uh, amendment. Uh, certainly vote on it in a moment, I guess, uh, as the priority project. It's really important that you, and, and the intent tonight is, is that the province knows for sure what our priority is, the priority project. Uh, there's a lot of other things in that uh, Rapid Ready report, uh, which, which are also uh, things we're interested in, but it's important to have the very, you know, the plan A, the priority project clearly spelled out, and that's what this motion does. Uh, if they want to fund other things, that is their decision, but our request, and we want to make it very clear for them so they're not confused, the priority project is, is the, uh, the B line on, uh, on King Street. So I think that this amendment uh, uh, is helpful in the sense that it uh, provides the province uh, with that clarity, and uh, also uh, it respects the uh, rapid ready report which the mayor has spoken to, and uh, Councillor Clark uh, spoke to that off the top as well. Okay, and to the amendment, Councillor Clark. I, I understand the intent, I can't support it. Um, the document that the mayor has, that this council has already voted on it, provides the province all of the directions in terms of what this council wants. It's clear. I would go so far as to argue that the amendment may be contrary to the substance of that report because that report does not go into details in terms of which priorities, one, two, three, or anything. It doesn't deal with priority. So since it's not there, it would be a two-thirds vote to overturn previous decision in order to now set it, uh, priorities in LRT. We are jumping through hoops because of some inane comment from the leader of the group that has not been just clearly stated, I, I misspoke. And we're now jumping through hoops to say to everyone, well, we haven't changed our position. I haven't changed my bloody position. Councilor McCaddy hasn't changed his position. No one around this table has changed the position. The resolution stands. It's the resolution of this council. It's that book. In two weeks, we find out what's going on on the financial side. Why are we needing to jump through hoops to reaffirm something? Because there was some confusion between what the, the mayor of the city said and what the paper reported. I don't really care what the paper reports. I honestly don't. I care what I say and what this resolution says to the government of Ontario. And absolutely nothing has changed from when we passed that motion. Nothing. 
and you were jumping through hoops to prove ourselves and our intent to some people in the community who saying, whoa, there's a big conspiracy here because you're playing games behind the doors. Mr. Mayor, you have to explain yourself. I'm not going to explain you and your comments. But my position, my colleagues on this side of the table, I know very clearly nothing has changed. And I don't think anything's changed on the other side. Why are we doing this? Why are we opening up doors that may or may not start triggering things that we had no intention of triggering? What we need to know is that report from Mr. Zagarek, and then we get on with the plan. It's very simple. I'm tired of jumping through hoops to respond to misstatements, misquotes, misunderstandings from someone else on the council. I don't do it. Ask the media. They call me, I don't respond to them. Not interested. I didn't make the statement. If you want to know what I think, I'll tell you what I think. But I'm not going to talk about what someone else said. This council made its decision. We stand by that decision. It's over. Please be very careful what you're doing here. That, that amendment may change the complete substance of that report that we provided. And I looked at that report on the weekend. I had nothing else to do. Um, and I can tell you, that is a very complete, comprehensive report that unequivocally makes it clear to the province of Ontario the intentions of this council that we all supported. Nothing's changed. Okay, we have no more speakers to the amendment then. Oh, Councillor Whitehead. No, I have to, you're on the main motion. Do you want to speak to the amendments? Well, the amendment, I, I, I want to be absolutely clear because uh, I read that report as thoroughly and it's amazing how we can get maybe slightly different interpretations out of a report. So I'm going to ask staff, is this motion inconsistent? inconsistent well, I think you're going report? back to the main motion though, Councillor, not dealing specifically with injecting one. Okay, I'll address priority. that then then. Sure. Okay, thank you. I have Councillor Johnson wants to speak specifically to this. Yeah, thank you. And through you, Deputy Mayor, to either Chris Murray or Jerry Davis. The amendment that is being proposed in front of us, priority project, does that conflict with the Rapid Ready report that we unanimously agreed to? I'll start with that with the city manager. Or, uh, okay, I'll do could, it again. You could assign it, Chris, to anybody you want to answer that question, but I'll, as the Deputy Mayor, we'll deflect it to you first. Uh, you know what, because the clerk was up there ch um, chatting with him, can I reword this for you? Thank you. We have an amendment in front of us right now that says priority project being the B line. Is that in contradiction of the rapid ready study that we sent, that report that we sent to the province? Is that in any way contradicting that, that report that we unanimously dis agreed to? Chris? Um, if I can to you, uh, Mr. Mayor. The, um, I think the, the point that's been made uh, and if I can, just indulge me just a little bit here to a bit of context, and I'll get right specifically to your Thank question. You. Um, the reason why we wrote that report, um, first of all, we've been focused on the B-line uh, for some time, many years, in fact, investing heavily into the design of it with the understanding that we'd be moving ahead with that project subject to the province agreeing to the funding as per the comments made earlier, 100% funding. So that's been where we've been focused. From a, certainly from a staff perspective and from the direction that I think we got back in 2011, in the fall of 2011, um, one of the things that struck us was that uh, it, it certainly if the province chose to defer the building of the B-Line, there were other matters that we believe needed to be addressed here in Hamilton. No question in our mind. We were worried that it was going to be potentially an all or nothing situation. So we requested and received direction from you to go away and come back with a report, which is what we've done. What we've given you is a report that has a, a, a wide range of uh, transit investments that we believe should be made in Hamilton at the end of the day. Uh, there isn't anything there that we would say uh, is unimportant. Um, so in, in terms of where we've been all along, we've been focused all along on the B-line and advancing the detail of that B-line so the province can make a decision on the B-line, okay? That's, but clearly Rapid Ready has added to that a number of other investments that should they choose, should the province choose to defer the B-line to some later date, we are still there with our hand in the air saying, wait a minute, there are other things you should be investing here in Hamilton. Okay. That is it. Okay. okay. So that, that in, that's the, 
That's the sum total motivation for the report and all of its options. And so to suggest, to clarify at this point that you want to make clear if there's any uncertainty around the priority of the B-line, you are saying that the B-line continues to be uh, our focus. You are saying, uh, I think by this motion, that uh, you want the province to make a decision on the B-line first, and that subject to that, if they choose to advance the B-line, then by all means do that. If you choose for whatever reason, province, to defer the B-line to some other, we are still there with our hand in the air saying, do not pass us by. There are a bunch of other investments that we believe you should be making here. That's, in essence, the motivation behind the report, and that's what we think that report does for you. It puts the ball, certainly, in the province's court to make a decision. We've done our homework. We are ahead of everyone else. You know, we think investing in transit, LRT specifically in the city of Hamilton, is something fundamental to our growth, and that, you know, it's, it's really at the end of the day up to the province to make a decision about what it is it wants to invest here in Hamilton. But clearly, we have been focused on the B line, and by you saying tonight that you wish that they make the first decision on the B line investment, and if they choose to whatever reason defer it, then we're saying we're still there wanting to see the other investments made as well. Okay, thank you. Through you to Chris then. If we pass this amended motion right now in front of us, does that now take our rapid ready study and push it to the end? Or would you like to see something else amended in here? As we've got priority project, why are we putting, can we add the, uh, sorry, can we add the amendment that priority project, however, we still unanimously uh, support the rapid ready study? Jerry? So, through the Deputy Mayor, the, I have the, Mary would give me the, uh, the report. So, it explains that the report be submitted. I'm sorry, the, I can't hear you, Jerry. It explained the Rapid Ready report be submitted. A1AI, 100% capital and any upset net operating levy impact for light rail transit. So, what Chris has said is, uh, you know, we're there. Uh, at, at, with the province. What you're saying is, is the B-line the first one. What the Rapid Ready report said is any light rail transit, we want 100% capital and any upset net operating. So that was the recommendation that we sent to the, uh, to the province. Okay, so through you to um, Jerry, uh, through Deputy Mayor to Jerry. So this amendment, the priority project, does that contradict what we've already asked in the first place? Or do, is it, maybe my question to you, Jerry, should be, if we pass this amendment right now, does that contradict the Rapid Ready study? Or does it enforce it? By adding the word priority. Project. Project. Does that uh, change the tone? of the original report. I don't know, has, has Chris, you or sure. Jerry? I, I, I'm fine to answer that because I know I've been working with Don and others on this and as has Jerry. I mean, I think it clarifies it. I think that's what it does at the end. I don't think it negates it. Uh, I think everything that is in that report still is in that report. It simply says that, you know, uh, I think what council is saying here, and again, we've spent millions on the B-line. You know, the B-line is consistent with our planning. Uh, we've invested heavily in the land uses related to this transportation investment. Um, so I don't think, you know, turning our back on it is, is, and I'm not suggesting for a second anyone here is even implying that. But uh, that's where we've been focused. All that we've done is by you, maybe I'll phrase it this way, by you saying that it's a priority that province needs to make a decision on the B line first as we've been working together on it. And then what we're saying is, is that the balance of that report, that's the Rapid Ready report, must then also be given consideration uh, if in the event they choose to uh, defer uh, the B-line investment in the short run. I think I heard you okay. say you're okay with it. I threw, hang on. Uh, you know what, I'm starting to sound more and more like, <laughs> I won't say. So the answer is uh, yes? Yeah, in essence, yeah. Okay. Thank you, and this is on the, 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 the amended motion. If, if we are going to put in priority project in there, I would feel a lot better with, and also the, the rapid ready study as well. So we, we still confirm that our beeline is our, our intention, but the rapid ready study is also our backup plan, or it's part of the backup plan. 
So thank you for that. Okay. Um, Councillor Duvall, to, just to the amendment. The amendment? To the amendment only. Just to adding the word priority. Okay. Uh, to the amendment. Um, I won't agree to the amendment. I knew on February what I voted for. I don't know why we're here today over the last hour doing something that was in the media. Somebody went another direction and wanted to say something. But I know we have to, um, the public out there is now confused. So if we're here to reaffirm it, what we're doing that we did on February, I'm glad to be supporting it. Okay. Because it's... Uh, I think you're speaking to the main motion though, aren't you? No, no on the amendment. So uh, what I'm saying is... I will support the motion, but not on the amendment. Okay, okay. thank you. Okay, no other uh, speakers on the amendment. So, I'll, to the amendment. Can I hear the amendment, please? You want to reread your amendment again, Councillor Farr? Would you like me to read, Councillor Clark, Part A in full, including the amendment? I just want to hear your amendment. I think it's insert. It just the amendment is the word priority followed by the word project. So, to clarify then. What Mr. Murray indicated, is that what we're doing? Overall project is still... Yeah, that's what I heard, yes. Right, and what Mr. we've been Murray working on for years like, as a priority project, we're putting the words priority project in Part A, Councillor. And if they say no to the priority project, what happens? Because I don't see that. Well, we have the rapid ready report. really helpful if I could just hear one person. Yeah, we have the rapid ready report, and you've heard Chris's response. and. And with the greatest due respect, is that referenced in your amendment that we re, we go back to the rapid ready? I think the, the, focus, the focus is LRT here, in all due respect. The focus is, is our priority project. The focus is 100% funding of it. And the focus is just reiterating what we've already supported with, with respect to the B-Line LRT, a priority project, which is why. And I, I, I should note, Councillor, in answer to your question, Councilor, the amendment. The chair, through the chair, please. Through you. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. The amendment is in place based on the earlier discussion. Councillor Clark, give the floor. Well, no, the amendment is not in place. The report is in place. And the report very clearly gives the province opportunities beyond what the first priority was, which was LRT. What we're now doing is passing a motion that says the LRT is the priority. And that gives the Minister of Transportation really good signals to say, okay, fine, we can't afford LRT and we can't afford it for 15 years, we'll spend our money elsewhere. Our report, okay. our report, Mr. Our report that we filed says something completely different than that. And this is a big mistake. Okay, I think that uh, point's been made and I see no other speakers on this. Uh, so let's put the, uh, the amendment to, uh, to rest then. Um, all in favor of the amendment? Aaron. Who's opposed? Uh, record to the Councillor Clark, Councillor Pearson, Councillor Johnson, Councillor Pasuda, and Councillor Duval are opposed. And the Mayor, sorry, and Mayor Bertino. I'm going to pose that question right now to the Clerk. Do you want to stand and record a vote, Madam Clerk? Okay, all in favor of the motion, please rise. No, the amendment. At the amendment. The amended motion. The amendment to the motion. Councillors Whitehead, Jackson, Collins, Marula, Morelli, Farr, McCaddy, Ferguson, and Partridge. And those opposed? Mayor Bertina, Councillors Duval, Clark, Pearson, Johnson, and Pasuda. Madam Clerk. That carries, Mr. Deputy Mayor. Thank you. Okay, we're back to the main motion. I'll go back to the original speaker's list. Councilor Mulley, do you want to be a second time speaker? No, I'm, 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 I'm a separate issue. No, no I'm I'll come back to you then as a second time speaker. I have other speakers ahead of you. Uh, so on first time speakers, I have Mayor Bertino. For you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, uh, some question was raised by yourself about where this uh, $860 came from. So I just forwarded it to all members of council. And <clears throat> Toronto City Manager wants sales tax, gas tax, and annual parking transit expansion. 
The city's top civil servant is recommending Toronto give Metrolinx the green light to pick from a group of taxes. City manager Joe Penichetti's newly released report endorses two waves of potential revenues, including these various taxes. Uh, Mr. Panichetti says all taxes or user fees should be imposed equally across the greater GTHA area. There's no question about affordability and the difference between Hamilton and that. He wants it all over. And further, uh, Mayor Ford says he is not in favor. I'm not supporting any of those revenue tools, he told reporters at City Hall. So the key part is the $860 and it's uh, within the story and it's broken down by their financial staff who for all I know may include Rob Rossini. Okay, so it's a media report. It's though. a media and you have it now on your Blackberry. Secondly, to uh, the comments made by the city ma manager, I'm going to quote from Don Hall who wrote this in the, this was quoted in the silhouette on October 25th, 2012. If LRT were to be implemented down the road, Don Hall, director of transit of the city, said the system would likely replace some of the bus network we have near McMaster, most notably the B line. It would call for the restructuring of HSR service, but that is a long way off, 10 to 15 years. We're currently working on a fall report for council that would provide details of how LRT could be ultimately implemented ultimately implemented. So if, if we're going to continue on with this motion as amended, this, we have to have a two-thirds vote to throw that out, and I've quoted, I don't know if anybody's listening, but it says here over and over again, build the transit service to the point where we're ready for light rail. Okay? And finally, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you to Councillor McCaddy. Did you say that I was willfully stupid as you were quoted? Councillor McCaddy? Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I uh, had emailed you uh, saying that I didn't think I said that. That's, didn't not, think that's not my uh, phraseology. And I, uh, I checked with the uh, reporter who uh, wrote that, and they in fact had me on tapes as saying that. So indeed I did say that. Am I proud of saying it? No. Did I say it? Yes. Sure. Oh, okay. So, on the question of accuracy, and you did send me, and you didn't say you thought it, you said you didn't say it, but you thought you knew who did. So I, I apologize for that. But on accuracy, about a week before, there was a statement that the mayor flip-flopped on the police budget. The mayor, this is a journalistic statement, the mayor is quietly changing his position or whatever it is in the budget. But in the body of the story, it said clearly it was inadvertent, and I will correct that. So the story was not accurate. The headline was not accurate. Everything else, my quotes were. So from time to time, inaccuracies do occur. And the Toronto Star had a beauty right in the front page. They apologized left, right, and center to a lady. And, and retractions and corrections occur in the spectator as well. They have a page for that, and they hang their head their hat on accuracy. So to members of council, through you Mr. Deputy Mayor, that statement was not made by me and the, the reporter, Mr. Deputy Mayor, did not have her tape recorder. She's, she did her shorthand and, and I have no arguments with the reporter. She's a fine lady, she does excellent work. But the statement attributed to me was not made. Okay, anything else? No. Thank you. Councillor Paul. Can I ask, on the, the motion that now that's amended, can I ask, um, I guess to our clerks, do we need to put, to take, would this supersede our, our original motion on February? Madam Clerk? Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you, um, I don't know enough about the report, but I would take it from the comments that the city manager said that it wouldn't, um, that no, that would not be the case if it's not inconsistent. So, so, so do we have to? Oh, oh, I ask you this then to, to the clerks: Do we have to um, have another vote on February twenty-fifth um, meeting? Do we have to overturn that to put this in place? 
Madam Clerk, I, I think I heard you say no based on the city manager's comments. That it's in, it's in line with the original resolution. Okay. So if, that, if that's the case, then I, I will be supporting this. This is what we, we said we we're going to do. I'm, I'm waiting for the report to come back. I want to know what the money is. Um, sure, I think we're as, all looking forward as, to that. As, as Councillor Ferguson indicated, I was here. I was present when we asked Metrolinx. They said the 100% funding. I don't know where all this other stuff come from, and there's $860, and it could be from another issue. I don't know. But I, got him down. I think our residents are looking to find out if the funding is there, and if it's not there, the way these rumors have been coming forward, then we have to relook at the whole situation, and that's where we're coming from. So I'll be supporting this and waiting for an answer. Thank you. I got you. I got you. For a second time. Okay, um, I'm finished with first time speakers. Well, now I now start down the second time speaker list. <laughs> and uh, I have Councillor Clark, Marula, McCaddy, and Whitehead. So, Councillor Clark. Thank you. Um, first, I feel for the clerk because it's a little bit unfair for the clerk to provide advice to the council um, based on the volume of that particular report. Um, Councillors themselves should have been fully apprised of that report, and they know what's in the report. So um, it is a substantive change. With the greatest respect to the city manager, it's a huge change. Um, you've got all of those other options. What you're now saying is that LRT is going to be the priority. So with the greatest of respect to my colleagues, if, we, if, if they say no to LRT because they don't have the money for 15 years, what's going to happen to Hamilton's report, the rest of it, for 15 years? We submitted it to them, telling them what to do. What's going to happen to the report? We've given them the option. We've now said, no, nope, LRT is our priority. So it does change. It does change very clearly. Um, as a matter of fact, the overall, and, and I urged my colleagues at the beginning of this, stop, don't do this. Don't have these votes. Because where we had unanimity, you now don't have it. You now had a split vote on the first time on LRT going back to the province of Ontario. We had unanimity, had no one moved a motion, no one moved an amendment. That report we all supported. We had 100% unanimity. Now you've got it going down split. And it's quite possible that this amended motion is going to go down split. And so you're now going to be telling the minister and the premier that the city of Hamilton doesn't know what they want because they're going to try and interpret what that vote means. What does it mean when nine people vote one way and seven vote the other? Does that mean the public is going against LRT? We've got to be careful here, because LRT is a huge, huge piece of political capital for this premier. They're planning on running on Metrolink's program for the next government. And if they're losing, for support in a city like Hamilton, and that's now what it looks like because it's split down the middle and they'll interpret it any way they want. All we had to do, it, it let it ride. You, you, you criticized the mayor, you admonished him for his comments, it was over. The position of the council stands. But no, you gotta go further. You gotta cause confusion instead of leaving it the way it was. So before you vote on this amended motion, think twice. Are you sending a clear message now like you want to? Or are you sending the muddiest message ever made in Hamilton? Okay, uh, Madam Clerk, you had a point you want to make? Yes, Mr. Deputy Mayor, through you, um, I understand that, uh, just to hopefully to clarify, that um, this was one of the priority projects listed in the report that was approved on uh, February 27th. So if we as a suggestion would further amend the, the motion to say as one of the priority projects, then that would make it not inconsistent with what was approved in February. Okay, I, I'm not sure we're clear on what you just said, Madam Clerk. Just as a suggestion, Mr. Deputy Mayor, that a further amendment to the, mo the main motion, which you can do, you just put, say put another one of our motion priorities? to add as one of the in front of priority project. Okay, um, the mover's not here. Point, point of order. 
uh, the amendment was, but we're, do, we're debating the main motion now. We're on the main motion now, which was moved by Councillor McCaddy and uh, uh, Madam Kirk. Yes, uh, just to clarify, yes, you voted on the amendment to the main motion. You can further amend the motion yes. again if you wish. Yes, somebody if can, you wish somebody to. can put up, uh, when we go around the table, can put up a, a second amendment if, if they like. Okay, um, so we're still on second time speakers to the main motion, and Councillor Marula is next. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. What we have before us is really an unfortunate circumstance, and we still don't have an answer, so I'm going to ask one more time. We've, we've been told by the mayor that the only reason why we're here today, we would not even be having this discussion, if we weren't um, provided with a quote that, that, that was in the Hamilton Spectator that stated that the Premier of Ontario, at a fundraiser, stated to Mayor Bettina that um, we as a city had a choice between all day goal and LRT. He claims it's inaccurate. I just need to know now. Now, now we know that it's inaccurate. Um, that means somebody has fabricated the story. So I'm just wondering, are, are you saying that the Hamilton Spectator fabricated a story as a news story? Because it, it, that, to you... I think, uh, Councillor, we've been down that road. I think uh, he said that he was misquoted. He said he was misquoted. Correct. Okay, which in essence then... States okay, that it's uh, fabricated. Now, now just to, just, we have a point of order. Do you mind if I, I'm going to go to the point of order now? Yeah, that's fine. We'll make sure it's point of order, Councilor Clark. To be clear, Mr. <laughs> Chairman, we're now dealing specifically with the motion. That line of questions has nothing to do with this motion anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah thanks very much. I'm glad you're here tonight because you've been missing a lot of meetings. So, uh, on that front, um, <laughs> would you like the doctor's name of the hospital? If on that front, um, let, let me just make a ruling. Well, I'm on just this. Let, let, let me make a ruling, and this is a chair, and you can always challenge my ruling. My ruling is that it is part of the main motion. It was part of the discussion that occurred during the discussion of the main motion. So, I agree that Council Rule is in order to. Now, I don't want you to keep asking the same no, question no, over I, I, I just He's basically called the Hamilton Spectator, the mayor has. Okay, this is, this is flabbergasted. I called the Hamilton Spectator liars. That, that's on record. He didn't say that. He said well, he was misquoted. Because they're telling otherwise. So one of them was lying, and I, yeah, I'm just telling okay. you. Okay, so, and then and, and saying that, uh, just briefly, as we were all discussing, I saw the mayor beeline, left the chair, and basically aggressively pursued our city manager. I, I noticed that the, the tone, I heard, I didn't hear exactly what was said. But the tone was very aggressive, and one, I would say, of a bully. So through you, Mr. Deputy Mayor, to the Mayor, what exactly did you threaten our city manager with when you uh, approached him at the bench? Mr. Chair, this individual is completely out of order. This has nothing to do with our You're discussion. You're not in a position to ask and I'm not going to answer. Order. The question is really simple. I heard you yell at our city manager, and through you, for the sake of openness and transparency, what did you bully the city manager over this evening? Okay. Um, I th <laughs> Obviously, he's not denying it, so he did it. So okay. the bottom okay. line is that that's a type of decorum that works. But he left the chair to basically attack our city manager. I think that's totally inappropriate. And I want an investigation. I want to go in camera to determine exactly what was said. Because I think, I think at this point, this is something that we as a council, as a community, should be aware of. When we have a mayor leaving the chair to go threaten or bully our city manager, I think we need a full and open investigation to be transparent and open to allow the city manager to at least acknowledge what was said. Because I heard, I heard the tone, didn't hear the details. So we need to deal with this. Okay, we, you can certainly ask for that when we have a motion to go in camera. I want a full on investigation. A, on another I think matter. the integrity commissioner should be involved as well. Thank you very much. Okay, and... Uh, Councillor McCaddy. Thanks, Mr. Chair. And uh, I can tell you, I honestly brought this motion forward in, in, an, in an effort to uh, clarify Council's position to the province of Ontario uh, so that they know uh, exactly what we're, we're after. And I, uh, I was influenced, perhaps wrongly, uh, by, by uh, some pre uh, early comments after my uh, comments that uh, we didn't want the, uh, the province to, to say, uh, you know, uh, if, if we don't support the B line, uh, then you don't get anything, Hamilton, because you, you said that uh, in my original motion that the, uh, the funding would be for the B line LRT on King Street. 
uh, be affirmed. So the addition of the amendment that Councillor Farr brought forward, that it be a priority project, uh, was meant to address that point, uh, that the province of Ontario would then know that th this is our priority project uh, and that there are other things in that report that they can, they can read and they can see uh, that are also uh, things we have an interest in. But it's, in my experience, it's always important to be clear exactly what you want uh, and then uh, the province, of course, is, has the ability to say, we appreciate that's your priority or what you've been working on the last three years and we've given you $10 million to do the design, but we, uh, for whatever reason, don't want to fund that. We want to fund something else. They've always got that, uh, that right to do that. They're the folks that are funding this, uh, this work. So the, the intent of my motion was to clarify that the, the B-Line LRT was, was, the, was the focus of, of the City Council. Uh, I, you know, we, we've all read that report, uh, most of us, and, and I spent a lot of time on it. It's a fantastic report, the Rapid Ready Report, Mr. Deputy Mayor. And, uh, and uh, it, I'm having some difficulty uh, speaking here because I maybe I'll talk to you Mr. Mayor because you're paying attention to me uh, but uh, anyways I, I guess I'm really wasting my uh, breath here I, my, my main point was that uh, I didn't bring this motion forward to create the kind of kerfuffle that has occurred here over the last hour or so just to, just uh, it was, it was just to clarify as, the as, uh, as a suggestion the clerk's come to me and said that the wording needs to be wordsmith and, and I'm wondering I, you know, I don't think we want to go to a split vote. I think it might be useful to refer this back to the clerk and the city manager. Mr. Mr. Deputy Mayor, I certainly don't support that. I met with the deputy, with the clerk, uh, and I met with the legal department in putting this motion together. They made some recommendations okay. for changes uh, having to do with the uh, procedural bylaw. You know, what can council direct the mayor to do, and in what way? Uh, they can direct the mayor to do this and this. They can't direct the mayor to do this, this, and this. So don't talk about those things. Uh, you know, be accurate. So I'm accurate to the procedural bylaw with, with my original wording. Uh, and uh, I met with the clerk and I met with the, uh, the chief solicitor. So the, uh, the report is very clear, and, and the city manager has been very clear, that the recommendation, uh, the focus of council is on the B line. We spent how many years working on this and, and why would we do that if it wasn't the focus? But given the recent comments and, and confusion uh, in, in the media and elsewhere and, and knowing that the province pays attention to what, uh, what, what is uh, printed in the media, the attempt was to clarify that the B-Line is our priority, priority project. So to, to change the motion at this point uh, to talk about one of the priorities or other things is fundamentally changing the motion. Uh, so I, I certainly can't support that. I'm not sure where you're going because uh, I, I haven't heard any other wording. Uh, but I, I certainly can't support any changes to the motion uh, as it's written other than to make, uh, make it clear that this is the priority project versus just the project, which, which uh, leaves it open for the province to consider other options should they wish to do so. It actually improves the motion and provides uh, Hamilton uh, with the province with more options should they decide to pursue those options. Okay, um, so I, I'm I'm just baffled at the discussion. We, we can keep going. Council can do whatever it likes. I, my only suggestion is there seems to be some angst about whether or not this motion changed the rapid ready recommendation, and and it may be helpful. And the clerk's on. She she's going, wants to propose some more changes. It may be proper to refer it to the clerk and the city manager to wordsmith it to so that it is linked to get everybody comfort. But I'll leave it. It's at the will of council, and uh, I'll, I'll look for any future motions. So I have next speaker. We have. Councillor Whitehead, then Councillor Johnson. Thank you, um, Mr. Mayor. I, um, when we dealt the A and B line, I remember uh, uh, there was a real fanfare uh, around this, uh, the council, and the council unanimously supported the B line. This report was complementary to the priority for the B line. This report, this rapid report, is supplementary to the priority on the B line. So I'm trying to understand how people like to try muddy the water when in fact there's no conflict here. If the province of Metrolinx do not like where we're at or, or don't, do not think we're prepared or ready for the B line, we have now provided them options in the rapid transit report. 
There's no conflicts here. I don't know why people are creating conflicts. There's absolutely no conflicts by supporting and reaffirming a position we really took. And here's another point, um, uh, uh, Deputy Mayor. We would have had to have two-thirds vote, two-thirds vote to support the rapid uh, uh, report if it was in conflict with the original position of supporting the B line. So obviously everything locks, links in well together. And I don't know why this game is being played. The reality is, is that we're consistent. The city manager clearly articulated that it's consistent with the original position of council. It's, uh, the, uh, uh, the city manager clearly indicated there's no conflict here relative to the rapid report. It's all different than when we created that list that the province came in and we, we, we created priorities and where we want the money spent. Now, remember what happened? The province sort of skipped over those priorities and chose their own uh, projects to fund. It's not much different than that. So what we did with the, the rapid report is provided alternative options if in fact they uh, say no to the B, uh, B line. So I don't know why the confusion. Yep. All we're doing here is reaffirming a position that we took and we would need two thirds vote to support the rapid transit if in fact we didn't support the B line. So don't confuse the matter. This is just reaffirming a position this council always had. I support the regional position and there is no conflict, so let's not confuse this. Okay, thank you, Councillor Johnson. Yeah, thank you. And, and the reason I kept asking about the rapid ready document was because I don't see it anywhere in this motion. So if it was in this motion, then I would feel more comfortable if I can go back to the person who's moving it and ask if I could ask for a, an amendment to the priority projects as one of the priority projects as per the the rapid ready document because there's no there's no mention of the ra rapid ready document in here and that's what's muddying it for me so to get my comfort out of this and to and I still think it would achieve what, what you're going for and that's one of the priority projects as per the rapid ready document that's that's it you're just asking them to revert back to exactly what we voted for and I'm comfortable with that so I'll leave it up to the mover and if not then I, come back to me and I'd like to defer, refer this back all due respect, I'm seeing the clerk running around here trying to get all these things in motion. Do we need two thirds? Don't we need two thirds? And, and I'd feel better if, if it was all brought here and the process was brought out properly. So those are my comments. I would like to make that amendment. I'm asking my, my fellow colleague over here if he's okay with that. There's no mention of rapid, ra or sorry, rapid ready document in this motion at all. I think it brings it into that motion and then it's, it's clear for me. Okay, um, Mr. Third time uh, Speaker, Councillor McKay. Deputy Mayor, uh, through you to Councillor Johnson, I, I think perhaps where we should go, uh, given all the, the discussion, is that it should this should be referred to uh, to clerks uh, for for clarity. I, uh, I I'm I'm still not sure myself uh, why why it's not clear that it's the B line, but but there seems to be some confusion or, or other opinions on that uh, on Council. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, I mean, the key for me is is to reaffirm our position, so the uh, so the province is clear, right? Uh, that's 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 the intention of this report, or this motion rather. But uh, if if it's if there's some uh, clarity, and, and I agree that it's hard to put clerks in this position to be running around and and working with Chris and others, uh, so. Uh, I would certainly uh, support uh, referring this back to clerks and uh, having it come back. Okay, you have Council Mayor Pertina, then I'll come back to Councillor Johnson for the report. <laughs> Mr. Deputy Mayor, my opinion is that this is a substantive, substantive change to this document. And if we are going to make a change, I would suggest that we forward the document to Metrolinx and ask them if this wording would give them cause for discomfort because it doesn't reflect what has been sent. I'm sorry, Mr. City Manager, I can't. I have got the floor, Councillor. Oh, I'm sorry, I was just trying to talk to Councillor Johnson with a referral. Councillor Mayor Pertino, can you have the floor? The, 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 the statement that we're, we're in for the B line, but if it doesn't work, we've got some other options here. That, I don't see that in that document. And I've read that document over and over again, and I've quoted from it, and I told you what Don Hull said, maybe 10 to 15 years. So how that relates to that's what we want first, but 
If in case not, then this. And okay. I think that's a substantive change from what's in this document. And I think that it should be forwarded to Metrolinks with the proposed change. Okay, so I'm going to uh, turn to Councilor Johnson. Who's going to move a referral motion that's referred back to the clerk's office for compliance with the with the original rapid transit report. So, Councilor Johnson. Um, thank you. If it's all right with Councillor McCaddy, I think that Councillor McCaddy is in agreement with, with sending it back to clerks. And I believe we both have concerns as to why it's going there. And I'll put my concerns forward and I'll leave it up to Councillor McCaddy to finish that motion, if you don't mind. Well, I'll go to my... Councillor McCaddy to second okay. it then and, and then okay. we'll open it up for speakers. So I'd like to refer this motion back to clerks for accurate wording to avoid any um, contradiction or con conflict with the rapid ready document. Okay, that's very clear. And the second thing was to to determine whether or not a two thirds vote is needed for this motion. I think that was also a, a little bit unclear. Okay, Councillor McCaddy, do you want to second that? Okay, and I'll Thank go to you. you. Mr. And Councilor you want to speak McCaddy. to it, I believe, Councillor McCaddy, to to the referral. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have uh, I have no uh, I have no comments. Thanks. Yes, just instructions. You have no comment. Okay, I see no other speakers in this matter. We're going to send it back to clerks. All in favor? Carry what? Referring it back to clerks. Carry. Opposed. That carries unanimously. Yes. Good. I'll turn the chair back to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, members of council, are there any other notices of motion? Hearing none. Oh. Mayor, I, I do want to go on camera because I'd like to uh, elaborate on the episode that I witnessed and I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Murray his thoughts on what had transpired. Well, you'd like to make the motion? Uh, I move that. Have a seconder? Collins. All in favor? Just a clar clar clarification. We'll go, we aren't going in camera now. We'll go when we go over the other matter. So all in favor of moving going. Is that carried? I'm sorry. Uh, just so it's a personnel matter. Why are we going in a closed session? Uh, a personnel, a personnel matter. Councillor Clark. Um, I would suggest that maybe the council might want to come to the next meeting and have a more formalized motion to make sure that you've crossed your T's and dotted your I's. I'm not sure exactly. You know what, that's actually preferable. I, I prefer that actually. I'll move that we, we, we do Just that. Just put it as a notice and you come so, back yeah, with a motion. We'll do it as a notice and then, we can, uh, then that way we can actually compile okay. all the data necessary for the right. discussion at that time. Councillor, uh, city manager, did I threaten or bully you when I approached you at the... You know what, I heard it. What I heard I what you said. What I got it verbatim that you're being awful nasty. Awful nasty. You're out of order. Well, you're constantly out of order. You're this is of terrible order. what you're doing. What did I say to him? I got it right here. Yeah, I said I can't believe you said that. Well, why didn't you answer that question before if it's not such a big deal? It's not, it's not relevant to our conversation. It was between Why didn't you manager. offer the manager to respond? Council, you're out of order. Members of councillors, do you have any items of interest? Councillor Clark. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. And... Um, um, I appreciate the fact that uh, the good counselor across the way pointed out that I had been absent in the last couple of weeks and I want to thank um, my constituents um, and my colleagues, Councillor Pearson and Johnson and Powers specifically for helping me out. I came down with some strange gastrointestinal, they thought it was Norwalk virus and I was rushed by a hospital to the ambulance by ambulance and I was in the hospital for a good five days. Um, I don't usually miss meetings unless I'm not well. I'm always surprised when colleagues of mine in the true sense of parliamentary process would point to other colleagues' absence in a meeting without giving any context for their constituents. That being said, I forgive him for his comment. Um, Dr. McMullen, who was my doctor inside, he, he, he did an awful lot to, to get me well. It, it was a little bit scary to be that ill. I've never been that ill before. Um, I spent four days in our St. Joseph's emergency room because there were no beds and I was in a, like a quarantine and then finally got a bed in the hospital. Um, I am catching up on all the emails. I appreciate the prayers and thoughts of all of my constituents who found out about it. And I also want to thank the spectator because the spectator were completely aware of the situation yet they respected my family's privacy um, and did not publish any of the details. Um, and so frequently people 
um, berate and admonish um, the media, uh, but here was a situation where they were completely respectful of my family's privacy and, and expressed concerns on a number of occasions in terms of my health. So with that, I just uh, want to thank my colleagues for their support during that time frame. And, uh, we didn't share it with anyone else, and candidly, I'm not interested in hearing anything else from the gentleman that made the comments earlier. Okay. Councillor Pearson. Uh, and lastly, uh, Councillor Farr uh, uh, left, and you may be wondering why he left so quickly. Uh, his, uh, I think he mentioned it briefly, his son's uh, birthday is uh, today. And that's a pretty important uh, thing for a child to have a birthday. So uh, I wanted to just to finish up, Mr. Mayor, by saying uh, happy birthday to Jake Farr. Thanks. Happy birthday. Councillor Morello, you had one more. Yeah, just, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I just want to mention, too, that on um, May the 4th, that Saturday, I'll be doing a Jane's Walk as well at Gage Park. And I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Mary Bonus uh, for pulling things together where Sam can ride and I can walk, and that will occur between 10 and 11.30 on Saturday at Gage Park. Thank you. Um, <coughs> members of Council, I represented you with a very state visit. The President of Macedonia, Dr. George Ivanov, came to Hamilton. We have a large Macedonian population, a couple of churches, one fairly new one up on the uh, East Mount. And I didn't want to change the nature of the event. It was very dignified, but he did tell a joke. So since the president of Macedonia told a joke, I offered one back to him. And I said, do you know, sir, that McDonald's is doing a joint venture with Tim Hortons in Skopje? They're going to open a store called Macadonuts. And he laughed, unlike you people. So, uh, and also, I, his spe the message that he brought to a, a special banquet that evening was uh, multi-ethnicity, multicultural. Apparently, their culture. He's very proud of the multi-ethnic ethnic nature of Macedonia. And I said, "Well, how do you like this? This suit was made in Stony Creek by an Armenian from Turkey." And he was pretty impressed with that because you know the Stony Creek Taylor people. Um, Council, just before we break to go in, in camera, I. I I regret that decorum fell apart a little bit. I've been very proud, and I think we all have been markedly uh, noticeable in this term of office in, in behaving well around the table. My sister was here tonight. Uh, she came from Halifax. She's actually just moved here, bought a house so she could help look after mom. And my wife, and the reason they were there was they felt that I might need support because there was going to be some kind of outburst tonight. And so I thank them for that. And I, I will also, and there they are. Hello, El. Hello, Carol. And a lot of nasty things have been said in print and in, uh, in front of cameras. Council, I defy you to find anything that I ever said directly personal about any one of you, any media interview. We may say things behind closed doors here. But in terms of public statements, I, I really regret that. And I remember very well Ken Peters coming to me once and asking me to say some dirty stuff about, uh, unkind stuff about Councilor Marula. And I said to Ken, I said, Ken, let the public, you remember the article they wrote about Councilor Marula sometimes, it's, it's an interesting talk to his friends and so on, but I said, Ken, let the public judge for themselves about don't expect me to say something to build a story on. But I was most disheartened because one expects from certain people certain ways of speaking and behavior. But the comment that the mayor of Hamilton, who was voted, you know, I won the election fair and square, my biggest area of support was Ward 4, the ward that I grew up in, Trajina Avenue North. And I had the highest support, and I have support in almost every ward of the city. So when I appear on your behalf at what is literally a state funeral, such as I did today, what would citizens expect 
if the person who's representing them in the honor of the moment is being spoken of as willfully stupid. So I hope that as we go forward and finish this term, we will return to the decorum that we started with because we have done a very good job. I'm very disappointed at what happened tonight and I'll leave it at that. Members of Council, item 10.1, the closed session minutes from the April 10th, 2013 Council meeting. If there are no questions with respect to these minutes, may I have a motion to approve the minutes? Whitehead, Ferguson, all in favor? Carried. Members of Council, item 10.2 is a report 13002, the Selection Committee recommendation of a citizen appointment to the Hamilton Public Library Board. Councillor Johnson may have a motion to waive the rules in order to allow consideration of Selection Committee report 13-002. Thank you. As chairperson of the selection committee and seconded by my vice chair, Terry, uh, Councillor Terry Whitehead, that section 5.62 of the city's procedural bylaw, which provides that a minimum of 48 hours shall pass before the standing committee report is presented to council, be waived in order to consider selection committee report 13-002 dated Tuesday, April 23rd, 2013. All in favor. If you have any questions with regard to the appointment, it would require a motion to move in closed session, so we're good with that? Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, so no discussion. May have a motion to approve Selection Committee Report 13-02, respecting the appointment of Claire Wagner to the Hamilton Public Library Board. Councillor Johnson and seconded by Councillor Whitehead. All in favor? Sure. Thank you. With respect to GIC Report 13-009, information item J2, a motion please to move into closed session pursuant to subsection E and F of the city's procedural bylaw and section 239.2 of the Municipal Act as the subject matter pertains to litigation or potential litigation including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. The receiving of advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege including communications necessary for that purpose. Respecting proposed settlement of OMB appeals of development charges bylaws 09-143-09-144-11-173-11-174-11-175 Hamilton Halton Home Builders Association and Lazani Homes 1988 Limited OMB file number DC 090025 and DC 11008 uh, A motion please to move into closed session. Pursuit of pursuit. All in favor? That's carried. Great. Thank you. Those who are not required to be here, please leave. I want you to take the chair, okay?